Welcome to Pals. It's from Zanyamu's Anatomy Lecture Series. In this place, our goal is to make anatomy simple. If you're just joining us or you have not subscribed, we would like you to subscribe now and be part of this amazing anatomy family. This is the part two of our lecture on the gross anatomy of the lungs. In the part one of this lecture, we focused on the basic anatomical features of the lungs. In this part two, you are watching, we will discuss the bronchial tree, bronchopulmonary segment, and innervation and blood supply to the lungs. And there is a part three, which will be on applied anatomy of the lungs and clinical correlates. We will also answer some multiple choice questions from various exam boards on the lungs. So let's go to class. The bronchi and all of their subsequent branches are collectively referred to as the bronchial tree. It actually has the appearance of a tree, as you can see from the illustration. So the bronchial tree is made up of one, the principal bronchus, two, the lobar bronchi, three, segmental bronchi, four, terminal bronchioles, and res respiratory bronchioles. The mnemonic, please try, can be helpful. The trachea divides outside the lungs at the level of the lower border of T4 vertebra into the two primary bronchi or principal bronchi, the right principal bronchus and the left principal bronchus. We will start with the right principal bronchus. This branch of the trachea is shorter, wider and more vertical. The length is about 1 inch which is approximately 2.5 cm. Its axis deviates about 25 degrees from the long axis of the trachea. This slight deviation from the long axis of the trachea makes it to lie more or less in line with the trachea as will be compared with the left principal bronchus. Now, the left principal bron bronchus is narrower, longer, and more horizontal than the right. It's about two, two inches long, that's about 5 cm. Its axis deviates a little bit more than we saw in the right. That is about 45 degrees from the long axis of the trachea. And by this, it lies further away from the line of the trachea. And this has a lot of clinical significance, as we will explain in the part 3 of this lecture. We will proceed to the next level of branches which are the lobar bronchi. Within the lungs, the right principal bronchus divides into three lobar bronchi, one for each lobe of the right lung. And the left principal bronchus divides into two lobar bronchi, one for each lobe of the left lung. The tertiary bronchi. Each lobar bronchus divides into segmental or tertiary bronchi one for each bronchopulmonary segment. The segmental bronchi will then divide repeatedly to form very small bronchi called the terminal bronchioles. The terminal bronchioles give off respiratory bronchioles. The respiratory bronchioles lack cartilage in their walls. Each respiratory bronchiole aerates a small portion of the lung called pulmonary unit. The pulmonary units are concerned with gaseous exchange within the lung. Also, it's good to note that the respiratory bronchial represents the transitional zone between the conducting and respiratory portions of the respiratory system. Each pulmonary unit is made up of one alveolar duct, atria, a circles and alveoli. The alveoli are specialized sac like structures which form greater parts of the lungs. They are the main sites for gaseous exchange. Arterial supply of the lungs. The lungs are supplied by two sets of arteries, which are one bronchial arteries and two pulmonary arteries. While the bronchial arteries bring oxygenated blood to the lungs, the pulmonary arteries bring deoxygenated blood 
to the lungs. We will consider the bronchial arteries first. The bronchial arteries supply nutrition to the bronchial tree and pulmonary tissue. We have only one bronchial artery for the right lung and this arises from the right third posterior intercostal artery. Now there are two bronchial arteries for the left lung and they arise from descending thoracic aorta. The bronchial arteries provide nutrition to the bronchial tree as far as the respiratory bronchioles, that is the non-respiratory portion of the lungs. So the respiratory portions of the lungs are nourished by pulmonary capillary beds and atmospheric air in the alveoli. We we'll look at the pulmonary arteries. The pulmonary trunk bifurcates in front of the left main bronchus into the right and left pulmonary arteries. These arteries bring the oxygenated blood to the lungs, one pulmonary artery for each lung. So the right and left pulmonary arteries lie anterior to the principal bronchi as they enter the hilum of their respective lungs. The left pulmonary artery passes below the arch of aorta and is attached to its undersurface by a ligament called the ligamentum arteriosum. The longer right pulmonary artery passes below the carina, which is the point of bifurcation of the trachea, to enter the hilum. The pulmonary arteries divide into lobar branches in the hilum and with further division to segmental branches. These segmental branches will branch successively in accordance with segmental branches of the bronchial tree. Venous drainage Just like in the arterial supply, the venous blood from lungs is also drained by two sets of veins. One, the bronchial veins. Two, the pulmonary veins. First, the bronchial veins. These veins drain the oxygenated blood from the bronchial tree and pulmonary tissue. There are two bronchial veins on each side. The right bronchial veins drain into a zygous vein, while the left bronchial veins drain into hemiazygous vein or left superior intercostal vein. Pulmonary veins. The pulmonary veins drain oxygenated blood from the lungs. There are two pulmonary veins on each side, just like in the bronchial veins. The pulmonary veins do not accompany the pulmonary arteries. The tributaries of the pulmonary veins are intersegmental, while branches of the pulmonary arteries are segmental in distribution. Lymphatic drainage of the lung. Drainage of the lung is by two sets of lymph vessels, the superficial vessels and the deep vessels. We will take the superficial vessels first. The superficial lymph vessels drain the peripheral lung tissue that are beneath the viscera pleura. They form the superficial or subpleural plexus that is found beneath the viscera pleura. They now drain into the bronchopulmonary or hilar lymph nodes. Deep lymph vessels. They drain the bronchial tree, pulmonary vessels, and connective tissue septa and form deep plexus that drain into bronchopulmonary or hilar lymph nodes. So it's good to note at this point that both the superficial and deep lymphatic vessels drain into the bronchopulmonary or hilar lymph nodes at this point. Now, the hilar lymph nodes will now drain into the superior and inferior tracheobronchial lymph nodes located superior and inferior to the bifurcation of the trachea, respectively. These nodes, in turn, will drain into the pre- and paratracheal lymph nodes, then into the right and left bronchial medicinal lymph trunk, 
which finally drain into right lymphatic duct on the right and thoracic duct on the left. Nerve supply. The lung has both sympathetic and parasympathetic nerve fibers innervating it. The sympathetic fibers are derived from T2 to T5 spinal segments, while the parasympathetic fibers are derived from the vagus nerve. Both provide motor supply to bronchial muscles and circuitomotor supply to the mucous glands of the bronchial tree. The parasympathetic fibers cause bronchoconstriction, vasodilation, and increased mucous secretion, while the sympathetic fibers bring reverse effects, which are bronchodilation, vasoconstriction, and decreased mucous secretion. The afferent impulses arising from the bronchial mucous membrane and stretch receptors in the alveolar walls pass to the central nervous system through both sympathetic and parasympathetic fibers. Now we've come to bronchopulmonary segment. A bronchopulmonary segment is defined as the anatomic, functional and surgical unit of the lungs. It is the area of lung supplied by a segmental bronchus and its accompanying pulmonary artery branch. It is the smallest functional independent region of a lung and the smallest area of the lung that can be isolated and removed without affecting adjacent regions. As we noted earlier in our lecture, tributaries of pulmonary veins tend to pass intersegmentally. There are 10 segments in each lung. Let's consider some characteristic features of bronchopulmonary segments. Number one, it is a subdivision of the lobe of the lung. Number two, it is pyramidal in shape with apex directed towards the hilum and base towards the surface of the lung. Number three, it is surrounded by connective tissue. Four, it is aerated by segmental or tertiary bronchus. And five, each segment has its own artery, a segmental branch of the pulmonary artery. And six, each segment has its own lymphatic drainage and autonomic supply. We'll look at the various segments for each of the lungs and we'll start with the right lung. The right lung has three lobes. The superior lobe has three segments, which are the apical, the posterior, and anterior. The middle has two segments, the lateral and the medial, while the inferior has the superior or apical, the medial basal, anterior basal, lateral basal, and posterior basal. A mnemonic, a palm, a map, may also help for easy recall of these segments on the right. For the left lung, there are two lobes. The superior lobe has one, the apical, two, posterior, three, anterior, superior lingula, inferior lingula. The inferior lobes are the same for both the right and the left lungs. And they are superior or apical, medial basal, anterior basal, lateral basal, and posterior basal. So these make up the 10 bronco segments for each of the loops of the lungs. This is where we end this part of the lecture. If you have questions, comments, or suggestions, please drop them in the comment section. The part three of this lecture is on the applied anatomy of the lungs and clinical correlates, and also answers to some multiple choice questions from various examination boards on the lungs. If you have not subscribed, please do it now. And if you like the video, press the like button and also share it to your friends that will need it. And together, we will build a unique anatomy family where we make anatomy simple. See you in my next video.